manufacturing sector still holding strong as one of the most important pillars of the immersion economy. The Economic Development Board is fostering a diversification of markets to face competition. In this edition, we see another aspect of the blue economy, which is the culture of oyster, a new type of business which has tremendous potential. Mauritius export is dominated mainly by the manufacturing industry, which amounts to 60% of its total export. This includes products like sugar, textile, animal and vegetable oils. And our main export partner remains the European Union with 64%. Also, we have new markets like USA, South Africa and Madagascar. In today's edition of Business Connect, we will be meeting with Mr. Girish Bhaktawan Singh, the head of the manufacturing and today we will be discussing about the challenges and the progress of this sector. Welcome to this new edition of Business Connect. Welcome to this edition of the Business Connect and today we'll be talking about the manufacturing industry. Um, my first question would be, what do the statistic indicators say about the manufacturing sector, especially in the last six months of 2019? Well, at the outset, let me precise that the conditions prevailing are difficult. We know very well that the market that we normally export in Mauritius, the major market, UK, we have had the Brexit issue. We are having difficulty in France with the Gilets Jaunes. And you know the cost of production in Mauritius keep up climbing. But despite all these major difficulties and even some factories, you know, shifting base, or even closing down, okay? Uh, despite all these difficult conditions, okay, there are many entrepreneurs, okay, and their companies are showing resistance. And we have recorded a 2.2 increase in the export value if we take only the EOE companies. And if we take all exporting companies, all domestic companies, it's even, it is much more. So there has been, you know, uh, a, a, a small resistance in, in certain contexts or certain products. It's even reversing the declining trend and we are showing uh, resilience. So that's good for us in the manufacturing sector, for the Mauritius companies and for Mauritius in general. Can we say that we've noticed a growth in the manufacturing sector? Yes, as per the first six months in comparison to January to 2018, if you compare the figures of uh, 2008, the first half of 2018 and the first half in 2019, the EOE figures is quite clear. The official EOE figures show there has been a small increase. And if you go to the figures of all exports, okay, exports of all companies, it is clear that their increase is even bigger. So there has been, from that perspective, you know, uh, a small growth uh, from uh, the, for the manufacturing sector. What are the factors that are contributing in increasing the demand on international market, especially for the Mauritian products? I won't say increasing the demands, it's not so easy like this, but I would rather say that the marketing efforts are paying its dividends. We have to change the tactics, you know, when we know that in Europe the difficulty we are facing on that uh, traditional market of ours with an increase of the number of competitors coming from other Asian countries, coming from Africa. But we are taking advantage on markets where we are having a certain advantage. We are taking advantage of the issue of the US-China uh, uh, difficulty they are having, that tension between US and China, and Mauritius is taking advantage, and even our exports to USA has increased. Okay, We, import, uh, we export principally shirts on this market, and there has been an increase in total exports uh, of USA. In fact, the exports of, uh, of apparel, textile, and clothing is due to uh, to a large extent to the increase of export that we are having on the US market. The export has also increased on the South African market, a, a market that we were not exploiting some 10, 15 years back, okay? And it has, happens to be our most important export market for apparel. The export on the US market, you know, actually increased by 12.3%. 
so which is quite considera considerable if you take into consideration the difficulty we have to export you know uh, with the cut foot competition prevailing from countries like you know Morocco Tunisia Turkey who are uh, countries th that export similar pro product like ours you mentioned about the new markets and taking into consideration the four P's how prepare are we because we need to enter new markets are we prepared for that we have economic uh, counselors who are based in different cities of the world namely be it in USA be it in France be it in UK be it in Australia be it in Russia so they do share with us market intelligence of how the market is evolving and what are the demands that's coming up you know uh, very soon we are going to go to Russia, an important market. For the first time, uh, Mauritius has secured admission to the prestigious uh, uh, Be Together, okay? And this will enable our operators to meet with a new range of clients that they were not serving till yesterday. And we even have a strategy of about serving the regional market for a wide category of products. Uh, lastly, I intervene in Botswana, which is basically a country that imports practically everything. They sell only diamonds and cattle, and they are heavily reliant on South Africa. And we are trying to position Mauritius on this market. We believe, uh, from the African perspective, there's a, a market that we can exploit from Namibia, Botswana, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania. And there has been, you know, uh, even from the private sector, you know, uh, 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 they have tried, they have had initiative from them in having warehouses, you know, in Tanzania. And all this, you know, enable us to come closer to your clients. And even, you know, I'm very happy to see that even our clients of ours can export now apparel to Australia that we exploited some two, three years back. So we are looking for other markets other than the traditional market of UK, France, uh, South Africa, and USA. We have to look for uh, new markets, new clients, new niche to be able uh, to serve and get also the, the first mover advantage from the sub-Saharan African context also to reach out for this market even this more. Because Mauritius has the advantage to be able, you know, to serve clients with smaller orders, with uh, new design, and to reach out for them more rapidly. So that's how we different ourselves with big manufacturers in China or in, in, in Bangladesh. So we are, we are able to take medium-sized orders, even smaller orders, in different colors, etc. From the point of view of the ease of doing business through trade agreements, what are the potential challenges that have been recognized? You know, from the perspective, you know, this has been the traditional model for Mauritius. We have been able to export to different markets, taking advantage till now on the preferential entry that we are having on this market. Okay, in Europe, duty-free, through the AGOA to USA, duty-free, the preferential rate that we have, you know, with Comesa, SADEC, etc. We have different agreements that have enabled us to go to position our product on this market. And the labor work is yesterday relatively cheap. But the model has to change now. We cannot compete only on the basis of preferential entry or, or having cheaper labor because the cost of production is coming much more there are other countries with much more cheaper labor. Even Kenya is having relatively uh, cheaper labor than ours. You know, we now have Ethiopia, Myanmar, all these new countries that have come up in the production of a number of products, including apparel. So the model is what we are, where we want to slightly move is to have model where we compete also in, in technology. We invest in technology to come out with a new type of products. When we are talking about promotion, new ways of doing promotions. More, more nowadays, everyone is connected, you know, through digital uh, marketing or connected through different sort of platform. And we are looking to explore that, that question, not only of selling B2B, but also B2C in order to reach out for clients. There are some innovation carried out, some initiative carried out by certain in the factories. And I know that uh, the export in these factories uh, for this initiative is paying, but still we are in the introduction stage and we'll have to come up and give more, more importance to that. So that's what we need to do in order to adapt ourselves in the new exigencies of customers throughout the world. 
And to end, uh, I would like to know what are the forecasts for the next six months of the coming uh, year? We are working towards, you know, uh, increasing the export of this year as compared to last year. And we have shown certain results in certain categories of products, okay? But there are so many conditions that are attached to it, okay, when it comes to the market you are targeting. Uh, uh, we all stakeholders, manufacturers, uh, agencies, association, we are all working shoulder to shoulder in the quest, you know, to develop uh, and sustain the development of the manufacturing sector because one should not forget that the manufacturing sector is an important contributor to the GDP. We contribute 12.3% uh, to the GDP, even much more than finance, even much more than the tourism sector. And we have to keep this sector growing. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much. The culture for oysters requires a lot of labour as it seeks daily attention. This has opened doors for anglers who wish to enter this niche. After the fish, it is the oyster that has become a reality as its demand for the tourist industry has reached over 1 million per year. And in today's edition of Business Connect, we will be meeting with Mr. Pearson, who will be talking about this aquaculture farming for oysters as well as for the crabs. Stay with us, we will be talking with Mr. Pearson. Hello, Mr. Pearson. Yes. We're talking about your company and about oysters. Can you tell us since when the Pearson Royals Corporation Limited exists? We incorporated this company, Pearson Royal Company, in 2012. And uh, this business we start in 2015. Because uh, of a place, we must look some place where we can implement the oysters because oysters is a filter feeder. It's a very, we must make it in a scientific approach. Mm -hmm. For that, we need the water good quality of water and also a good place. Mm -hmm. And how did you uh, come up with the idea of going into the oyster aqua farming culture? In Mauritius, we say that ocean economy, we must implement ocean economy and we don't have many farms in Mauritius. And uh, I say why I don't implement oysters farming because oysters is a filter feeder and is a, we make it in a scientific approach and it's very difficult. First of all, we need a place in the sea. Secondly, we must make it scientifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that, um, and uh, I think also tourists come in Mauritius. We are in an, an island, a small island. All the tourists, when they come in Mauritius, they say, oh, we come in Mauritius, we must eat seafoods. But we don't have enough seafoods. Mm -hmm. For that, I say, why I don't implement oysters? Okay. And how many varieties of oysters do we have in Mauritius? And what are the varieties that you cultivate in your farm here? Me, I implement about uh, 500,000. I start because I say we start with a, a Mauritian oysters because we can't import oysters to put in the sea directly because we must make uh, a laboratory because we can't take oysters from abroad. We put it directly in the sea because we must make quarantine. We can get disease, we can propagate in Mauritius everywhere. For that, we must make it in quarantine first. But for that, I don't choose to import oysters. I look at an oyster which is in Mauritius, the name is Kikilata, Casostria Kikilata. And in France, we have other species that we call it Jigas. Mm -hmm. But uh, me, I think to take these oysters because in Mauritius it's very hot and the climate, I don't know if the Jigas oysters from France will adapt in Mauritius and it will grow mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take for an oyster to mature and be ready to go on the market for consumption? With an oyster, we, uh, we must make a lot of work because uh, it's very difficult that I say you the climate of Mauritius and if we don't have a good quality of water, we must look about the salinity, the temperature and we must look also sedimentation. It's all this we must look and we make it in a scientific approach because I get help also from the University of Mauritius. We have some doctor who work with me because I don't have a laboratory now. I will implement this laboratory perhaps in one year. I need some uh, 
equipment, everything to do this. And the oysters take about three years, three and a half years. Do we need a specific uh, training to be able to go into the aquaculture or into the oyster farming? And you must be a marine farming? science. If you make a, a study in marine science, it's very good for you. You can go very fastly with an aquaculture. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need some, uh, I have been to Italy to implement all the aquaculture and I work in the laboratory there, then I develop how to make, how to manage an oysters, how to make the baby oysters, the juvenile, how do you grow it up. Mm -hmm. You can make it in the farms and also you can put, make it directly in the water. Mm -hmm. But when you make it in the farms, it's very easy for you because you can make more. Because an oysters, you can get about 60, when he lived, you can get 60 to 100,000 juveniles, eggs, eggs mm -hmm. of the oil, the small juveniles. But when, the, when you get it in the water, you must put some uh, cages that you can collect all the juveniles. But you can't, go, if you're in 100%, the, once he lives 100%, you can't get 100% in the sea. You can get about 20 or 15% mm -hmm. small oysters. But okay. in, a, in a laboratory, you can get 60 to 80 percent. Is there a specific season for the oysters to mature? We, ha we have, uh, especially in uh, in coal, when, when it's winter in Mauritius, then you get the small baby. Mm -hmm. They lay when it became uh, summer to winter or winter to summer, then they lay the eggs. Mm -hmm. You get the juveniles. Okay. And the larves. We can't say the eggs, this is the larves, small, small larves in the sea. Okay. Yeah. And, and then you have to treat it? Yes, we must uh, treat it because we don't feed because they eat only phytoplankton. Uh, you must choose a good place where you can get the phytoplankton. If you don't have phytoplankton, it's very difficult for you. And to get the phytoplankton, like this is a barasoa, it's closed, you must have a good flushing of water. If you don't have a good flushing of water, it's very difficult for you. Mm -hmm. how, does, how does your company contribute in creating employment in Mauritius? We are creating uh, employment because we need some young people like if we make implement a laboratory we need scientific people to work in this who make marine science and also we give works in the village all the people in the village when the the oysters lay the the juveniles then they go by the by the water by the flushing and we look at the people in the village to collect all the small oysters we buy it again and we put it in cages and what are your future projects? Let's talk about, let's see, where do you see yourself in the next five years from now on? I think uh, the company will grow up and we think to, make, to implement new things like crabs and also like mussels, all the mussel things, all the cell things that I want to make, but we need a good laboratory and also a, a nursery or nursery, then you can make more things because you must make it in a scientific approach. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And right now, at present, what are the cultures that you are doing? Now I am making oysters and also I am making a little bit of crabs that you can see here. But I don't make it in a large scale, the crabs, because I am looking for how it grow up, how we can make it in a, in a good way, in a good manner. It takes less time than oysters and many people are looking for this. And I think this company, we make all these things that Mauritian people can benefit from this. Mm -hmm. Now let us talk about the Mauritian market or even for the international market. Do we have a demand for the oysters here in Mauritius? Do you export your goods from here? Now I don't export. I supply all the hotel in Mauritius and also we, or some people, Mauritian local people, comes to buy it with me directly here. In the near I future? I think that uh, we must make all the scientific thing, laboratory, everything, then we can get the, the permission to export. And with this, we come to the end of our programme. We hope that you had a good overview of the various reports presented to you. Don't forget, you can catch us on our MBC website, on the MBC channels, on our Facebook page, as well on the YouTube channel. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Take care. Goodbye from the whole crew.